Are you looking for one? Yeah. I don't know where. If I sit someplace, you can go there. There's one right up there. Um, Maybe. I can share with you. As I light these candles, they represent and symbolize our inviting and recognizing the light of Christ in our midst as we gather for worship. Similarly, if you are at home, I invite you if you are able to possibly dim the lights, find a candle in your space, because we are together and united in the Spirit. As you've heard me say in previous weeks, in former days we would gather in that room to my right with the worship leaders right before we come out and we would have a prayer before worship. Now we are experiencing that prayer together in this moment. Our prayer this morning is written by Desiderius Erasmus who lived from 1466 to 1536. Let us pray. O oh Lord Jesus Christ, the way, the truth, and the life, do not let us stray from you the way, nor to distrust you the truth, nor to rest in anything other than you the life. Amen. Welcome, friends, wherever you are on your journey of faith and life, we affirm you. We are glad to be together. As you may notice, and for those of you who are experiencing this online, we are opening things up a little bit. You no longer need to reserve in advance. All you have to do is wear a mask and sign in. Find an open pew. We have expanded the capacity in the sanctuary. We are continuing to scrub the air, literally, with ultraviolet rays upstairs in the blower. We have a nice uh, flow of air through here, so we're feeling more and more confident and comfortable gathering together. We will always continue to record and make available our worship services for our online community, which has grown so much in these 16 months. Some announcements. Oh, I know what you're thinking, and especially our friends on the screens. We could have been at the barn today. <laughs> we have to make these decisions by Wednesday, and on Wednesday we weren't so sure it was going to be such a glorious day today. Forgive us. But unless it's raining, next Sunday, watch for the announcements, we'll be at the barn probably a little later in the day, maybe 12, maybe 1. So thank you for your patience. <laughs> thank you also to Mark and Margot Bridgen. They might not appreciate my uh, calling them out, but if you uh, wandered around here yesterday, you would have seen them working hard over at the garden behind the old manse, prettying it up, adding some plantings, and if on your way out, take a look. It's, it's really looking much, much better. Thank you, Mark and Margot. Our flowers this morning are from Jean Jacobs in loving memory of her husband, Doug Jacobs. Also, additionally, uh, we will have a Matthew 25 meetup after worship. We're going to have that meeting outside in the open air, grab a chair from the garage and join us in a circle in the backyard of the old lands. And um, a number of you have submitted, and we continue to invite you to um, Tell us about your experience of worship, either in person or virtually. I'm holding up a hard copy 
of our worship evaluation form. They aren't just for one experience. Anytime you experience worship, we would like to hear from you. We need data. It's not an exaggeration to say that we've made some changes in our worship, and we need to know how this is landing for us. The criteria, the rubric, is that Christian worship joyfully ascribes all praise and honor and glory and power to the triune God. In worship, we offer ourselves to God and are equipped for God's service in the world. We want to know if your experience of worship is leaving you more equipped to serve God in the world. So thank you in advance for filling out these forms. They're going to be very helpful. We got quite a few last week, and it's been very useful. Uh, the little free pantry outside has some needs. You'll find those needs in the back of the bulletin and on your screen. Thank you in advance for your generosity. Um, we will have a memorial service here in the sanctuary for Carol Batcher this Friday, May 7th at 2 p.m. We are taking reservations for that service, so if you're planning to come, please call the church. Also, we will be having a memorial service for Carol Taplin on July 10th at 2 p.m. And we are praying for the family of Carolyn Marquardt, who passed away. Carolyn was Kathy Izzo's mother and a good friend of Arlene Smith, and we keep the Marquardt family in our prayers. And today, we will be having communion. So, as I have said, we are all united in spirit, and if you are experiencing this worship virtually, I invite you to pause. If you haven't assembled your elements, we will be joining together and remembering the early church, who, according to the book of Acts, broke bread and ate their food with glad and generous hearts in their homes. So you're invited to gather your elements, a piece of bread, a dinner roll, a cracker, something gluten-free. Gather more than a nibble. Grace is big. And get yourself something to drink. Grape juice, water, milk is fine for the little ones, and anything you'd like to drink in a cup. If you need to, you can pause and assemble your elements and come right back. And lastly, as worship is intended, open your heart. One more announcement, and it comes from our music team member, Mary Brass. Hi, everybody. Um, I got an exciting email last week from Pastor Sarah Bigwood in Southampton, from the Southampton Presbyterian Church, and one of her um, strengths is technology. So during this time when they couldn't gather for choir, <coughs> she embraced the virtual choir situation. So she has extended an invitation to anybody who wants to join her. She did the first one, um, and she only had three people from her own church, but in reaching out and networking, she had 40 total people, and that was around the country. Um, and so, and it's super simple. I would love for if you have any, just a little tiny inkling of participating, please let me know. It's really easy, and I will help you. And she's giving us a real gift in being the one to put it together for us an opportunity to be a part of something like this and to learn from something like this. And it's absolutely not the same as singing in a choir. But it can create a similar amount of joy when you see the finished product. So I urge you to pray about it, think about it, and then call me up and let me give you the information you need so that you can participate. Thank you. We celebrate that we are a part of the body of Christ, and we have been called together on this Lord's Day. Let us continue to prepare ourselves, heart, mind, and soul, for our worship together. Good morning. Good morning. You're invited to join with me in the call to worship. A drop of water, insignificant in isolation. When dropped in a pool, <coughs> the ripples move out into infinity. The water is changed by one drop of water. A drop is fallen now into the pool of our spirit. The water begins to ripple. Holy God, as we consider the magnitude of a drop of water to touch and change the pool, may we feel the power of your touch in our lives, the potential for our lives to touch others. Amen.
to love you, O God, with all of our mind. We confess that our thoughts are seldom so pure. We are taught to love our neighbors as we love ourselves. We confess preference for ourselves being first. God, have mercy upon us as we make our confession. Christ, have mercy upon us and forgive our sin. Amen. This is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will put my law within them, I will write it on their hearts, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. No longer shall they teach one another or say to each other, Know the Lord, for they shall all know me, from the least of them to the greatest, says the Lord. For I will forgive their iniquity and remember their sin no more. Believe the good news of the gospel. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Now it's time for the peace. And we're going to revive something we uh, started a few months ago. And uh, I invite you to join with me. It's not compulsory. You don't have to. But we will exchange the peace using American Sign Language. It's very simple. Some of you may remember this. The peace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all and also with you. So, here's peace. Two emotions. Peace. Tranquility. Peace. The Lord Jesus Christ. Notice the palms. Be with you and also with you. The peace of the Lord Jesus Christ with you and also with you. Amen. 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 Testament reading for this morning comes from Psalm 22, verses 25 through 31. In the full assembly, I will praise you for what you have done. In the presence of those who worship you, I will offer the sacrifices I promised. The poor will eat as much as they want. Those who come to the Lord will praise them. May they prosper forever. All nations will remember the Lord. From every part of the world, they will turn to him. All races will worship him. The Lord is king, and he rules the nations. 
All proud people will bow down to him. All mortals will bow down before him. Future generations will serve him. They will speak of the Lord to the coming generation. People not yet born will be told, The Lord saved his people. The word of the Lord for the people of the Lord. Amen. Amen. to the slaughter, and as a lamb before its shearer is silent, so he did not open his mouth. In his humiliation, he was deprived of justice. Who can speak of his descendants? For his life was taken from the earth. The eunuch asked Philip, tell me please, who is the prophet talking about, himself or someone else? Then Philip began with that very passage of scripture and told him the good news about Jesus. As they traveled along the road, they came to some water, and the eunuch said, Look, here is water. What can stand in the way of my being baptized? And he gave orders to stop the chariot. Then both Philip and the eunuch went down to the water, and Philip baptized him. When they came up out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord suddenly took Philip away, and the eunuch did not see him again, but went on his way rejoicing. Philip, however, appeared at Azotus and traveled about, preaching the gospel in all the towns until he reached Caesarea. Sometime, some time ago, someone brought us here. We were brought here by a family member, brought to church, maybe not this church, the first church you attended, maybe as a child, maybe at a different time. But we're here, all of us, because someone took the time to bring us along. There is this movement in the good book, a movement of expansion. God never stopped with the covenant people, even if God may have started with the covenant people. Even the story of the Hebrew scriptures is a story of expansion. Rahab and the spies, Ruth and Naomi, people outside the fold are a part of this ongoing movement, this ongoing activity of God. And it's seen in the early church. It's seen in, in Jesus' ministry. In the early church, the story that Sailor and Stuart just read is about this continuing expansion. Philip is preaching the gospel, comes across someone outside of the covenant, an Ethiopian, 
That's what that region is supposed to conjure for us. Someone outside, a foreigner, not in the covenant, and a eunuch, not permitted within the sacred spaces of the synagogue. So Philip stops his chariot, and the expansion continues. What is to prevent me from being baptized, he says. And Philip teaches. Philip brings him along. Not the first time, not the last. The book of Acts describes this somewhat tumultuous expansion taking place among, of all people, non-Jews, the Gentiles. They had to have a big convention in Jerusalem to figure it out. Meanwhile, the gospel was expanding and continuing no matter what they said in Jerusalem. Thankfully, they got the point. And it continued. I have on my mind these days the question of who is it that we need to stop our chariots for today? You realize, right here, right now, in these pews, is a microcosm, but a representation, nevertheless, of five generations. Five. And we've heard these terms thrown around. We're going to list them for us, just for clarity. The youngest of us, how old is Sailor? Anderson. Anderson's over there. Sailor's eight? Yeah. Wonderful. Gen Z. Okay? Gen Z. <laughs> hmm. They were born 1999 to 2015. These are all kind of generalizations, but you get the gist. There's, oh, millennials born. 1984 to 1998. I see one. Gen Generation X, born 1965 to 1983. 34 to 56, got a few of those, yeah. Woo-woo! <laughs> <laughs> Represent. Baby boomers. 57 to 75, born 1946 to 1964. <laughs> Nobody wants to represent. <laughs> and then really want to get it. The next one, our elders, our builders, our greatest generation, born 1946 and before. Five generations. It's an important exercise to reflect on the worldview, the values of these five generations, because they are different and differently represented. We represent the Presbyterian Church USA. There are more of us who are the elders and the baby boomers than anybody else. That's what's got me thinking. That's what's got me thinking. The younger crowd doesn't need to come to church out of a sense of commitment, obligation, or duty. If they come here, it's for an experience. An experience, a transaction. They are caught by something genuine. That's very, very different than the way many of us were raised. Many of us were raised to come here because it's our duty. It's our obligation. It's a sense of civic commitment. It's important to recognize that because the literature and the statistics are telling us something important and a little bit astonishing. Many of us, I'm speaking for the boomers and those occupying around those edges raised in the church 
I can tell you stories, you know, Sunday morning, get up, are you vomiting? You're going to church. Yep, no question. Um, and then we drift away, right? Maybe there's college, you're developing your career, you're building your family. And then you suddenly return, you come back. Because maybe you have children and you want to get them baptized and you say you return. That's not happening anymore. And so the question becomes, who will come back to a place they never occupied? Thank you, Sailor and Anderson. An anomaly. Kelly. How do we stop our chariot? How do we continue? You know, the joke is, is perennial between ourselves and Southampton, who came first, right? 1640. <laughs> I like to repeat the Reverend Alexander Sign, who apparently said, I'm not so concerned about who got here first. I'm more worried about who's going to be here last. Mm -hmm. So in this 16 months of all of this adjusting and all of this maneuvering, we've learned some things about the screen generation. We've learned some things about people who are a little different than us. This younger group, and call them Gen X, the Millennials, Gen Z. You know what? They are not as concerned about the culture war issues as we have been. I can name you a session meeting when we were talking about who we should marry, who we should ordain. And the younger person in our midst was asked to share an opinion. And they basically said, I don't know why we're spending all this time on this. I resolved this a long time ago. That's interesting. They are much more open to people who are different than them, than, than we are. And before they will commit to an experience with us, they're going to investigate us on their screens digitally. It's why we're not stopping providing online worship. We have a whole community out there. Thank you very much, folks. Some around here, some spread out all over the country, even possibly the world. They're going to experience worship because their child is sick. They're on a business trip. Any number of reasons. They had athletics on Sunday morning. So they're tuning in Sunday afternoon, Monday, Wednesday. And those a little bit younger than us and look at the world we gave them. Cast your mind back. Look at the world that they've inherited. So much different than the world that we grew up in. A world of mass shootings. The world of 9-11. The world of the Great Recession. The world of climate change. The world of gaping economic inequalities world wrapped in a racial crisis, a world of a pandemic. The levels of stress and anxiety have risen. How do we stop our chariot? How do we make the monumental shifts that must be made so that we can continue to be a witness? as we have for over 375 years. We can't do it by looking in the rearview mirror. We can't. We have to look forward. So talk at Presbyterian Church. Hired a community minister, Reverend Ashley McFall, associate pastor. She runs the out, open door furniture outreach so that people who need furniture, they've transitioned, they're Transitioning from being unhoused, all kinds of circumstances in this lovely Suffolk County in which we live, find people in need. She spends most of her time 
in diners and coffee shops, reaching out, reaching out, stopping our charity. Interesting example. First Presbyterian Church of Glen Cove. We had a few people here who remembers there. Church no longer exists. Not in the way we remember it. It's now called Glenwood Table because they met around a meal once a week, shared a meal. When COVID hit, couldn't do it anymore. Glenwood Table now exists as a podcast. That's stopping your chariot because they have a following and a message. Sponsored, backed up by the Presbytery of Long Island and what was once known as First Presbyterian Church of Glen Cove, but nothing at all like what we recall. Amazing. There's five areas of human flourishing that have not changed and have only intensified in these last 16 months. We need spirituality. Human beings are spiritual beings. How do we provide that? We need relationships. We are social animals. <laughs> we learned that. 70% of all human communication is nonverbal. Thank you very much, Zoom. We all need help with our finances. We need to understand money as an instrument and a gift from God. Fourth, we all need help understanding what are we to do in the world? What is my vocation? What am I called to do, as we like to describe it as Presbyterians? And fifth, we've all been given these bodies. Representations of the presence of God in our bodies. What do we do with our health and our life? These five ways that human beings flourish or languish have not changed. As we move forward, we will be exploring and experimenting what it means to stop our chariot and reach out to the people who are not here. And maybe we don't need to be here in order to reach out. There's something known as an intention. People bring intentions to times of meditation and reflection and prayer. As I come to the table this morning, I've just described to you my intention, my concern, my question about the next generations. What intention do you bring to the table this morning? What intention do you bring to your table? Is it a challenge? Is it a burden? Is it a test? What, what intention do you bring to the table? You can bring these things to the table to be fed, to be nourished, to be inspired. But I am encouraged and excited about the prospects of not living our lives as a church from the rearview mirror, but moving forward and looking for all of the ways we are being called and are experimenting and innovating and exploring. And I'm glad we can do this together. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you that you have not abandoned us, not left us alone in any time in history, and especially this time. We thank you for the countless ways you have made yourself known in human relationships, in the church and the churches, the expression of your word, the good news of your gospel. Enliven us and empower us and equip us to move forward in ways that will be uncomfortable, yes, but ways that you have always called your church to be. Out in the world, with your people, all of your people, all of your children. Be with us, we pray, in Christ. Amen. Amen.
Please join me in the affirmation of faith. Through his promise that he would rise and be present in and with us, Christ invites us to experience God as the holy and creative spirit of justice, joy, and peace, moving through all creation, at work in all human misery, and present in our personal experience. May we seek to live into this faithful reality. In the name of Christ, amen. Bringing back something we haven't been doing, we will now share in the generosity of God as we share in the generosity of our offerings. And yes, the offering plates are coming forward. Thank you in advance. Blessings flow, 
Praise God, all creatures here below. Praise God above, ye heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Lord, we thank you for the gifts given, now taking on a life of their own. We thank you for all the gifts, representing all the people's willingness, commitment, love, faith, and hope. Bless all of it to your use, your presence, and your glory. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. body of this congregation, this table is an open table, which means that anyone who has placed their trust in Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, and who is sincerely endeavoring to follow in his ways, is welcome here. As bread was scattered on the hillside, and was gathered together and made one, so too we, God's people, scattered throughout the world, are gathered together around the Lord's table and become one. As grapes grown in the field are gathered together and pressed into wine, so too are we drawn together and pressed by our times to share a common lot, and we are transformed into God's life blood for all. So let us now prepare to eat and drink as Jesus taught us inviting the stranger to our table and welcoming the poor. May the absence of the stranger, the absence of the poor, remind us of the divisions that this communion seeks to heal. And may their presence help transform us into the body of Christ, which we share. Remember his words. Come unto me, all you that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. Jesus said, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me shall never hunger. Whoever believes in me shall never thirst. Whoever comes to me, I will in no wise cast out. Therefore blessed are all those who do hunger and thirst for justice for they shall be filled. I invite you to join with me in the litany of the great thanksgiving you find printed in your bulletin and on your screen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. We rejoice to give you thanks and praise, God of love, because you called us to exist in your image. You filled the earth with wonder and beauty and life, and you made all the children of Abraham your covenant people, a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, your own people. And in the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus, you show us the way, the truth, and the life. We thank you that you prepare a place for us with the Holy Trinity in your kingdom banquet, and you set a place for us at this table as we anticipate your glory. Be among us now in the power of your spirit that we may meet you in the breaking of the bread and that these gifts of bread and cup may become for us the presence of your son Jesus. Make us living stones, build us into a spiritual house that we might be your holy priesthood and that all creation suffering and flourishing, faithful and fallen, may be full with your glory and may overflow with your praise. To that end we pray, O oh Lord, and ask that you would hear us as we give back to you this prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, 
temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. According to the holy institution of our Lord Jesus Christ and in remembrance of him, we do this. On the night in which our Savior was betrayed, in the presence of his disciples, he took the bread and he blessed it and he broke it. And he said, this is my body, broken for you. Do this again in remembrance of me. And likewise, after they had supped, he took the cup and said, behold, this is the cup of the new covenant, sealed in my blood, shed for the forgiveness of sins. As often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the mystery of the saving death of the risen Christ until he comes again. And so all of us are invited to partake. Bread of heaven, cup of the new covenant. Thanks be to God. of wax paper. <laughs> Thank you for joy at your banquet. Thank you for the sound of human interaction and laughter. Thank you that you came that we might have life and have it abundantly and gave yourself and continue to give yourself that we might be fed and nourished and sent on your mission. Be with us, O Lord, we pray in Jesus' name.
God who is creator, redeemer, and sustainer. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Oh no. <laughs> Scoff law. Have a good day. Have a great day. Thank you so much. Thanks for coming. Okay, Professor, great to see you.